Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for my last April wrap up. I say that, and then all of a sudden I realize that. <laughs> no, this is actually my first week of May. I recorded some things wrong. Anyways fix that later. I finished four things this week. First, I finished Crumbs, which I promised I would. I knew I was going to because it was so adorable when I picked it up. It was one of those books that had been sitting on my library shelf for a while. Because I was like, oh, it sounds interesting. I want to read. Got it out. And then just didn't pick it up. And didn't pick it up. And then once I did, I'm like, why did I wait so long? Especially because I read it after I had turned in my Hugo Ballot. And this is definitely a graphic novel I would have nominated. So really, I am kicking myself about that. This is about a young woman. Well, the... <laughs> This is about two people. It's about a young woman who is a witch who is a seer, but at the beginning of the book, her power only goes, she can only see the present. So if someone's like, hey, can you help me about what's going on over here? As long as you know, it's about the present, she can see it, so she can't see the future. It's a very unique gift, and it looks like she's going to be accepted into this magical organization. And she's still coming to terms with it and how, whether or not she wants to, she has to go through an internship. She is a customer at a bakery where we meet the young man who is trying to become a musician. And they end up forming a relationship. And this is just a very cute, I would say kind of low stakes relationship because there isn't a lot of angst of will they, won't they, they get together, they agree, they like each other. It's more of a conversation of later, after you have finished your the honeymoon period of a relationship and you're deepening that relationship, there's certain conversations that come up and that's the conversations that are being had in this book. And it's also interesting to see two young adults who know what they want, they have goals, and so then they're navigating, how do I do these goals and a relationship? And oftentimes what you see in young adult literature is one of one or both put aside their goals for their love. And in this one, they find a different way to make things work. And that's as far as I'll say, because otherwise it would be a spoiler. And I really enjoyed how it happened because it was, it felt more true to real life. I just love all of the characters in this. Definitely want to reread it. And then I finished my reread of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I have already returned that to the library, but gorgeous artwork. Loved every minute that I was looking at the pages and just seeing that artwork. I have looked up the illustrator who is Jim Kay. It looks like he is still working on all, on finishing the Harry Potter series. So if you want to see some beautiful stuff, I would go look at uh, Go look it up. It looks like he's done through Order of the Phoenix, so book five. But like every page, even if there's not like a traditional illustration, there'll be like a print or a, some sort of texture to the page. And it just really enhanced that book. If it wasn't so big, I would definitely want a copy of my own because I like to read in the bathtub or I like to read in bed. The book is just a little too big for me to comfortably read otherwise. This is still one of my favorite Harry Potters. I feel like this is really where he's starting to come to his own and you see more of a divergence from how he approaches things and how his best friends approach life and you get a little more of their personalities. I then finished two novelettes that were nominated for the Nebulas. The first one was Two Hands Wrapped in Gold by S.B. Divya, and this is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, but the Rumpelstiltskin character, that's not his name, that is a mistranslation, extremely badly mistranslation. 
of when he's in Bavaria, but the actual character is from India, and the Midas touch, you know, the getting to touch things and turn them to gold is a gift from Lakshmi, and it goes into more detail. The concept of this story is intriguing for me, but the execution left me wanting. And I'll have this and the other novelette linked down below so you can go read it yourself. And then the second novelette was Murder by Pixels, Crime and Responsibility in the Digital Darkness by S. L. Huang. And this starts off with a like report, news report, of a man who rece started receiving text messages and other messages on his social media accounts basically telling him he was a piece of shit and he should die and how dare he live and eventually this man dies by suicide and then it goes into more of like a news research article of Sylvie who was the one sending the messages and you find out that Sylvie is an AI and they're trying to figure out how Sylvie came to be possibly a creator how much responsibility does this creator have for what Sully does you find, you meet some other people later who has had a very different interaction with Sully where Sully has built them up and helped them in hard times and really this is a good conversation especially with we have more AI coming out or may, more AI technologies but the format of the story was also kind of boring for me. A lot You get a lot of information about machine learning and the science behind it and ethics and... Eh. Not in that format of a story for me, I guess. It, it just didn't work. Then to what I am currently reading. I have started Night Music by Tobias Cabral, which is one of our finalists for the self-published in science fiction contest just really very very small into it but it it has kind of the feel that I like to my science fiction so I think it'll be okay I started with this one because this is the shortest book and have a lot of things going on right now I figured starting with the short one would be good because hey when is out there and so far it's about a pilot who operates in space in zero G and he's just gotten called into a meeting, and I'm sure that's where everything else gets revealed. The synopsis talks about going to Mars, so. I am also reading Alchemy of Sorrow. This is a anthology of short stories, science fiction and fantasy, focusing on grief and hope together. This is also working for my buzzword, a thon prompt of emotions and my public health readathon of trauma and empathy prompt, which I know that was last month, but I'm still working on it. I really wish short stories I read about one short story a day, and then if I don't get a chance to read, then I still just read one short story a day. There's no catch up. This is another one that I'm really sad that I did not pick up before the Hugo ballots had to be submitted because there are two short stories that I've read in here that I've absolutely adored and at least one of them I know would have been on my ballot if I had read this earlier. I mean, I guess that kind of goes into the whole when nominating for the Hugos and Nebulas, are people really given enough time to read widely for, out of the things that came out the year before? Or for awards, should we be giving people more time to read before nominating and judging. I think that would be an interesting conversation for the booktube community. And then I have also picked up Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first of the four secret projects that are coming out this year. I did not back the Kickstarter, so I had to wait for my library, and then there's a line already. I I'm very much focusing on this book because it needs to go back next Saturday because there are seven people on the list and waiting and I'm sure there will be more on it any day now. This is written in parts since I've read, I have 
read the first part of this, and this is such a heartwarming story already. It's about a young woman who is on an island where no, but none of the people are allowed to leave. And she has fallen in love with the Duke's son, and he has fallen in love with her. So it starts after they already love each other, and they're coming to understand that they both, it's a mutual thing. And then his father takes him off to go get married and secure a good alliance, but he makes her a promise that he won't get married. He, he's going to come back and marry her. And then the Duke comes back, and he doesn't bring Charlie back with him. He has adopted his nephew, and his nephew is now his heir. And you find out more of what's going on, and she's now decided she's going to go get Charlie. And again, she's not supposed to leave the island because she's a peasant. So I, just the style of this is writing. It just feels so heartwarming. I'm. This would definitely, I think, fall in like the cozy fantasy kind of vibe. And the relationships that she has with people. I mean, with Charlie, it, it's like a very comfortable love relationship. And then you get to see her having a good relationship with her parents it it's just so heartwarming where I am so far um I just started the chapter where she's just talked to her dad she's like okay I, I don't know how to get off the island because I don't want to put anyone else in danger of getting in trouble and so dad has not taken it upon himself to go ask people for a favor knowing that they are going to do it for her because of who she is and what type of person she is and also that her dad has also helped a lot of people out. So it's a very caring community. They're going to help. The, like I said, this is going to be one of my focus reads because I know I need to get it back so other people can read it. Otherwise, it's going to be months before I get it back to read. And I didn't bring it with me <laughs> to film. I am working more on Crucible of Hell. I've continued to read that nonfiction. Like I said, it takes me a long time to do nonfiction, but I am enjoying the different perspectives there's been one character, not character, because they're real people. There's been one man who is a news correspondent who has been killed. And just kind of the interesting of how he survived war in Europe. And then when he comes to the Pacific to cover what war is like there, that's when he dies. I guess kind of even that plot line feels like it would happen in a fiction story. writing wrap-up, I wrote a little bit of one of my scenes, my opening scene for my Adri story. I ended up last Saturday night being on a stream that Chandra, Arthur, and Natalie Locke were hosting sprints, and I wrote 445 words, which felt great after not having written for months. And then I haven't written the rest of the week, but I'm still living off of that high. <laughs> it's again, more that I need to make the time and there's just been other priorities. And while writing is important to me, other things also are important. That's life, you know, trying to schedule everything that you want to do. <laughs> For other media, I went through all of my TV shows that I am currently watching because I had caught up to where I can for Midsummer Murders and I was like, okay, what am I going to do next? And then one of my TV shows was The Librarians and I figured out, okay, I watched the first two seasons. I'm like, yeah, I'll just go start from the beginning again. Started watching it. I'm like, yo, I am a completely different person now. This isn't going to work. So I tried watching that and have decided to Dean up that series. So again, looking for something to catch my attention, to enjoy watching. That's kind of where I am with the TV stuff. That has been my first week of May. Science fiction and fantasy wise, I am really enjoying it. I think that I am having a great time. How has your May started off? Has it been a good one? I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day.